hey guys, in this video we're going to be looking at all the different parts of the eye and how it functions. The eye has a number of different parts. This is the sclera. On the inside of the sclera you've got the choroid. In the back of the eye you've got the retina. This part, the center back of the eye, is called the fovea. The fovea contains the highest concentration of rods and cones. Of cones. Highest concentration of cones, because that's where we see the most color. Middle back of the eye, there, you've got something called the blind spot. Here you've got the optic nerve. Moving towards the front of the eye, this is the conjunctiva. This is the cornea. This is the iris. This is the lens. And then holding up the lens, you've got the suspensory ligaments. And you've also got the ciliary muscle. In the center of the eye, there, you've got the pupil. Now, the pupil's not quite labeling a part. It's labeling a hole through the iris, through the lens, all the way from the light to travel to the back of the eye. So the pupil is this hole over there. Accommodation is when the shape of the lens changes to be able to focus on distant or nearby objects. So if we were to start on the left hand side, this is focusing on a distant object. You'll notice that in comparison to the right hand side, the lens is flatter. Now this happens because the ciliary muscles relax and the suspensory ligaments are pulled tight. So as the lens flattens Ciliary muscles relax, suspensory ligaments pull tight, which means you're able to focus on a distant object. So the lines of light are straighter and they reach the back of the fovea accurately. When you're focusing on a nearby object, it is literally the opposite. So the lens is fatter. Sometimes it gets called more rounded. That's because your ciliary muscles contract. This causes your suspensory ligaments to slack. And that means that the lens ends up being a little bit fatter or a little bit rounder. So the light rays are bent more to be able to focus on the back of the eye, the fovea. The iris reflex is how the eye responds to darkness or bright light, so dim light or bright light. Now you have two reflexes. You've got the iris reflex in dim light, and you've got the iris reflex in bright light. Now I'm sure that you've experienced this. When somebody's in dim light, their pupil is very large. When somebody's in bright light, their pupil is quite small. So, dim light, Inside of the eye, you've got your pupil in the middle, right, and you've got circular and radial muscles. When there is dim light, your radial muscles contract. Those are the ones over here. 
So they kind of pull the pupil wider. So if all of these muscles contracted, they'd make the pupil wider by pulling towards the outer edge. So the radial muscles contract, your circular muscles relax. The circular muscles are the ones that go in concentric circles and that will make the pupil dilate, which means get bigger. Now, bright light, you've got exactly the same setup. You've got your pupil in the middle, you've got your circular muscles around, and you've got your radial muscles in basically radii. Now, when you've got bright light, your radial muscles relax, and your circular muscles contract. So they actually pinch in so that the small dot in the middle, your pupil, gets smaller. So circular muscles contract and pupil constricts, which means get smaller. All right, now I'm sure you've noticed that when you walk from a dark room into a bright room, your pupils go from dilated to constricting. When you walk from a bright room into a dark room, your pupils dilate very quickly.